raise our hands and just wave. Hallelujah. Praise God. That looks beautiful. Hallelujah. Praise God. It, you know, I have been already introduced, so I don't need to say that again. I'm so happy to be with you all. You know, it's, I, I count it as a privilege and I count it something really wonderful. You know, this is the city that we landed. <laughs> we landed here. We did our immigration here. And this is the city that I'm coming out of the ministry, out of my ministry, to do my ministry here. So this is really wonderful. It's a joy. It's a joy to be with my uh, uncle and family after a long time, even though we may not look that uncle and, <laughs> uncle and nephew. But yes, uh, you know, he's my youngest uncle. And you know, it is such a joy to be together, to serve God. As he said, we have many pastors, but from my generation, uh, as of now, we have only two people serving God and praying that more people will come forward. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for this church. My, I'm born and brought up in an AG church uh, all my life in Bombay. Uh, we were in Nanderi AG church. And then from there, uh, I, after my marriage, I went for studies, came back to Mira Road AG church. If anyone is from Bombay, can you wave your hands? Bombay background, Bombay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can see a few hands, yeah. So, uh, and then as uh, we heard, for the uh, for coming before coming here 10 years we were in a lane and god has been faithful that's the that's the best part of it god has been faithful and you know he leads us by his hand you know and and we are thankful uh I myself i'm thankful for god for everything uh shall we have a quick word of prayer and get into the word heavenly father we want to praise you thank you for this wonderful moment thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace and thank you, Lord, for this evening you are in our midst. And Lord, you are doing something new today. We want to give you praise. We commit this time. We commit your children in your hands, O oh Father. Lord, we give you all glory in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. You know, I have been, uh, as I was pastoring, I was also a teacher for a long time. So, you know, a teacher always likes response, you know. You know, if there is more response, there will be more joy, and then I can take you all the way to 11 o'clock, right? No. <laughs> right. Don't worry, I'll, I'll stop in the right time. Yeah, uh, let's turn our uh, Bible to Acts chapter 3. Can you help me with that? Acts chapter 3, verse 19 onwards. Acts chapter 3, verse 19 onwards. Those who have the Bible or not, or... Uh, you will have it right here on the screen. Yeah, Acts chapter 3, verse 19 onwards. Yeah, let's give a moment. I just want to take you to that scripture and then get into the message because that's very much part of, this, of my message. And this morning, you know, we just was meditating on that word. Yes, it's right here. Let's read it loud. I'm going to read it out in English. Uh, this is a King James Version. Okay. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You know, a time of refreshing is coming upon you. God is bringing a time of refreshing. God is going to do something great tonight. Let's go forward. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution is what is said in King James Version. If you have New King James Version with you, it says, restoration anybody has a king james new king james with you yeah Rest, restoration of all things which god had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began i just want to start with saying you know and that's going to that's going to be a conclusion also that he is going to restore all things yeah he is going to restore all things. If we have the faith in him, if we are going to put our trust in him, if we ask the scripture says, if you are ready to repent and convert, 
then God is going to restore. You know, I, I'm not getting more detail into it because I want to get into my message, but I wanted this verse to come in us because this verse is going to be with us all through our uh, ministry till tomorrow evening that, you know, he is bringing a refreshing time. In verse 19, he says, the Lord is bringing a refreshing time. And in verse 21, he says that he is going to restore everything. Amen? How many of you need a restoration in life? I don't think so. There is anyone who doesn't need a restoration. You know, we all need restoration. The only difference is it depends from person to person and it differs from person to person. You know, we may all not need the same restoration, but we do need, including me who is standing here, you know, need restoration. And when I was praying for you all, when the Lord gave me the message and I was just saying, Lord, yes, this is something that I need. This is something that, you know, you know, I've been praying for. And the Lord started speaking more and more into it, saying that, yes, this is what you need. This is what you need. Let's get into uh, the introduction. I had already spoken about it yesterday evening, but I just want people who were not here, so I want to just repeat that introduction. Let's go into our slide. Can I, and I, can I start using this now? Okay. Yeah. All right. So for us, it's still day one, okay? <laughs> we are still on day one. And I just want to give you a brief thing of what is uh, restoration so that, you know, we will understand the, the, the essence of it. I'm not taking much time. I'm just running through it. It's, you know, Oxford Dictionary or any, any worldly dictionary defines it as the action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. It's an action of returning something not adding something, not subtracting something. You know, when something is returned back in the same manner, in the same... These coming days, I'm not going to change from this world. All our message will be focused on the same thing. But you are going to have restoration in your life, in every aspect of your life. And those things that you need restoration. God is going to deal with each one of you very personally. Because that's what the Lord promised me when I was going through. He said, I'm going to deal with each person. You don't have to see that. You have to give the word and I'm going to deal with you. Because the biblical meaning of restoration is, a, is to receive back much more. <laughs> it's to receive back much more or more than what has been lost. I like the la later part of it. You know, the latter part says, a point where the final state is greater and is glorious. You know, because if everything is restored as it is, then there is no difference between a biblical restoration and a, uh, you know, worldly restoration. But there here, the word of God says, I will restore you, not the same. You can take n number of examples from the Bible. We are going to take few of them from the word of God. And we are going to see to it. But, you know, you will have so many of them. You will have personal life experiences. You know, if I give you a chance, you will stand up and say, yes, my Lord has restored me, not the same, not twice, not thrice. He has restored me multiple times. He has restored my wealth. He has restored my health. He has restored my family. And there goes the list. That's what, that's what the word says. It's the, 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 the latter part of it. When God restores, the restoration is greater. Amen? The, la the restoration is glorious. May I ask you, brother and sister, to come forward so that, you know, you will feel within here. If it is comfortable for you, it is up to you to do that. You know, when we are closer, you know, the, it will be more wonderful. So let's go to the thing, what it says about, you know, when we continue about, I'm sorry. When, uh, yeah. What areas do we need restoration? 
you know it is not restoration is not just on any one particular area or any one particular thing but you need a restoration in your body how many of you say yes yes i do need a restoration in my body no i have something you know there's you know you know in previously you had certain problems that would come in a certain age right <laughs> after a certain age but you know nowadays there is no particular age for anything you know for there is no age certain things why because you know that's how it has become things have changed you know and that's where the scripture says that you need a restoration in your physical body in your mind this morning we were saying that you know we have a very logical mind doesn't mean that we become illogical no we are not illogical you know we do mean something we live logically in this world there are a lot of things that we have to do logically but at the same time we have to have faith that surpasses all this that surpasses human understanding that is what is called faith something that you see something that you know and something if you are believing on that thing that is not called faith faith is something where you know you are believing the unexpected because you know we have named some sickness some diseases and we say that oh no 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 that is not for praying for that is to be treated for these things are to be prayed for <laughs> we have a headache we have a small issues we have some that can be prayed and cured these things cannot be prayed but the word of god says every name is below the name of Jesus the name of Jesus is above every name on earth it is not just human names it is above every disease every sickness every problem that you face every problem that you have not yet faced his name is sufficient how many of you believe that not just the problems that you have seen not just the matters that you have faced but my god is sufficient for he is the alpha and the omega he is not just the alpha <laughs> he is not just the same yesterday he is not just the same today but he is the same forever amen amen hallelujah and that's why we need a restoration in our body we need a restoration in our mind we need a To have a glimpse of it you know when you are going for a, a wedding you are attending a wedding would you like to go only for a certain part of it and then you know nowadays it's become some something of a trend i've seen that happening back in india i don't know about here you know some youngsters they just come for the food they don't want to see anything else happening whatever is happening there might be some function going on dance going on they just come from behind have food and just leave and sometimes they are not even invited <laughs> now it is they have pass and everything barcode also will come very soon so that you know people just come in easily and they just go through the buffet and go out you know they don't even care whose wedding is going on and who's there you know so we have been not called for such a wedding we have been called so that we enjoy every part of it <laughs> from the beginning to the end we have not been called to have a glimpse of the kingdom of god we have been called into the kingdom of god amen Amen hallelujah that's why the lord loves you and because god loves you god says here i send this brother i send this servant of mine with this word saying that i am here to restore all things all things hallelujah all things hallelujah and it says that you know we need to retrieve not just something that was lost in the garden of eden but in every aspect of our life you know we need to retrieve that which was 
lost or that was you know i'm not getting into that message because that which was lost we need to retrieve it and doing that you know you know one of the i'm just putting i just put that across so that you can keep in your mind you know this is from one of the uh, sermons with one of the preacher gave he said now we need to rest you know and you know the people there said come on this is a 21st century and this is a time when the lord's coming is at hand and here the servant of god is saying we need to rest but what he meant was not just be slumber but he was saying we need to restore everything satan took be it in the garden of eden be it in your personal lives be it in your journey of christian if, if christian life it says that res- restore everything receive back everything that satan took this night are we ready to say yes I need to restore everything that Satan took. I'm not going to allow him to get away. No, I'm not going to allow him to take away the peace in my family. I'm not going to allow him to continue doing what he does. No, I'm going to say no, that's enough is enough. Have you seen people saying that? Have you seen dad saying that? Enough is enough. <laughs> no more. <laughs> I had it enough. And here says, you know, we have to say that to Satan, to the devil, to our enemy. Enough is enough. You are not going to snatch away what is being kept for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, there are so many areas of restoration, but we are going to specifically deal with certain areas. And that's where the Lord uh, told me that these are the areas where we are going to focus on. And these are the areas where you are going to get. We are, we are going to receive deliverance. We are going to re- receive restoration. And so we are, I'm going to just take few of them every time, every, every class that we have or every time we have because we have limitation of time. You know, so we have to rush in through it. But every session that we have, in those sessions, if you are ready to put your belief, if you are, if you are going to put your faith, you are going to get restored in those areas. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's get into the... Uh, Why is it not moving? If it got stuck. Yeah. I'm trying to point there. Point here? Yeah. It worked this way. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No problem. Somehow it has to work. Let's point anywhere. (laughs) Point to Jesus. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. So, you know, we are so familiar. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. You know, there are, you know, when we were young, there were some Psalms that, you know, uh, our parents would ask us to read again and again, you know. And we would be so happy because, you know, we are reading the same Psalm again and again, memorizing the same verse again and again. This was one of my Psalm also. (laughs) We read it so many times and we like to memorize it, you know. You know, but as we grew up, you know, also, you know, Psalms 91 we used to read, you know, our parents used to say, you should, you should read that, you know, and read and sleep, you know, because, you know, that's the way God has, you know, beautifully carved out things in the scripture for every situation. And here the psalmist, you know, the King David is saying that, you know, I'm not going to go to retail of everything. He says that, you know, he's Lord is my shepherd. Why should I want you know, why should I want when my Lord is my shepherd, when he's in control, why should I want? Because he will lie down. He knows where sh- I should lie down. 
you know he will lie down in the right place he will make me in the right city he will bring me to the right place he will take me to the right job amen hallelujah he leads me beside still water we have so many lakes around and we have so many still waters. So you can understand what is a still water. You know, he brings calmness into our life. And then in verse 3, he says he restores. Amen. Hallelujah. He restores. So what has happened to our soul? That means somewhere, you know, we are not in the shape and the form that God really wants us to be. That's why he says that David, the psalmist says that I'm going to restore. The Lord says, I'm restoring your soul. Your soul needs peace. Your soul needs still waters. Your soul needs green pastures. He knows what our needs are. He knows what goes on. You know, we may look very well dressed and, you know, good attire, nice speech, everything's fine. But, you know, many of us sitting here might be sitting with a disturbed mind. Lord, what's next? How will I continue? How am I able to take up this challenge? You know, my job is getting tougher and tougher. You know, things are not getting easier. You know, the, you know, I, there is so much of thing that goes around in our mind. The Lord says, I will lead you beside still waters. But many times, we don't do that. It seemed like, you know, you all have, must have heard that story over and over so many times about a young engineer when his car breaks down, he's doing some work on the car and he's trying to fix it back and nothing works. And then an old man passes by, you know, uh, with an old car. Suddenly, you know, uh, he stops and asks the young man, come on, how many of you knows the story? Let me hear from you. What does the old man say? Can I have a look? Can, you know, can I see the car? The young, this young man, you know, an engineer, he says that, you know, what better do you know than me? You know, I'm trying to fix it up. If it's not working, it's not working, you know. And after uh, a bit of <laughs> talking here and there, conversations, he finally gives in. And this old man fixes that car much faster than he could have ever imagined. You know, long story short, the maker knows us. That old man in the story, he's Henry Ford. I don't know whether it's a cooked up story or a real story, whatever it is, but it's a nice story. <laughs> it's a very beautiful story. It applies to biblical understanding very good, you know, because the maker knows it. He's our maker. He knows our heart. He knows our desires. He knows what situation we are into. And that's why he says he can only restore our soul. Only God can restore our soul. For he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's look into what it says. He restores us and leads us in the path of righteousness. That's what the scripture, what we read. He will restore us and lead us in the path of righteousness. The reason is what? Because we all have a tendency to fall back. You know, we have, that is, you know, that is not the creation problem. You know, uh, some people say that, you know, in manufacturing defect. <laughs> have you heard of that? You know, some people have some problem, you know, some uh, in the nature. <laughs> we say it's a manufacturing defect. No, God did not manufacture us with any defect. He made Adam and Eve in the image of God. The defect came out of sin. It was not a manufacturing defect. <laughs> it the sin, it the sin bought the defect. The sin bought that nature. And because of the sin in our flesh, we have a tendency to fall back. Fall back into the world. Fall back into the worldly things. Fall back away from godly things. You know, you don't have to literally step out into the world wholly. Going away from God itself is worldly. <laughs> Many people, they, you know, they say that, I'm not into anything wrong. I, I'm not going anything wrong way. But the problem is you're not also coming to church. <laughs> you are not going to wrong things, but you are not coming to church. You are not in fellowship. You are not growing spiritually. If you are not in the fellowship, then it's equal to be out. It is equal to, that's why it says, we have a tendency to fall back. Because the flesh that we live in, it lures us. 
It lures us into a sinful life. It takes us away from what God has kept us for us. It, it, it drags us out. You know, some way or the other. You know, there is always more than one thing that always takes us away from the scripture. But what can bring us back? You know, something that, you know, and, uh, these days we have been taking some Bible class or uh, regular classes back for our Dubai Fellowship. We still have a Dubai Fellowship. We, uh, we give the word from here uh, through the Internet. And we have been doing that like a regular Bible study. We finished with Ephesians. Now we are doing Philippians. And, you know, it's, it's been so wonderful. You know, it's been t spending time with Lord. And, and, you know, what happens is when we do it systematically, it's something very different. Now what happens is, you know, on the course, we didn't understand how God's word can bring change in people's life. We were taking a regular class, but as the classes were going forward, even before we finished Ephesians, we started people coming forward and saying, this happened to me. This happened to me. This is what God did to me. We didn't specifically pray for them. We didn't specifically handle those issues. You know, we were just taking classes. We were speaking to them about practical Christian life. And what happened is the word of God brought transformation. And that was such an eye-opening for us. It took us more than three months to just finish Ephesians. But during that time, you know, God started moving in people's life. Stubborn families, those who would not come forward, they started coming forward. Their husbands started coming forward. Wives started coming forward. They started taking time for prayer. They started saying that this is more important. And we could see that the word was doing wonderful, it, uh, wonders. You know, but it is God's word and the spirit of God. That can keep us from going astray. That's what we have to know. God's word has its place. And when King David, you know, when, you know, he says that, you know, he's my shepherd. I, why should I be wanting, you know? I shall not want, he's saying, why should I be wanting? Because he's my shepherd. He's taking care of me. He leads me. And there, that's the reason he says he restores. You know, how fortunate we are in this generation where we have so many versions of Bible. We have from the old to new. We have it in different print. We have it in, uh, in our, in our uh, electronic gadgets. We have it everywhere, but we seldom read. And there, imagine of those times when they had it only on animal skins. Papyrus, even papyrus came later on, but over animal skin, and that also they would have that not the whole portion. They will have some portion of it. And in those times, even then, if David has to say that, you know, my God restores my soul, just imagine the relationship. Just imagine how they would, you know, unless you are so intimately connected with God, you would not be able to even recognize when you go wrong. Going wrong, you know, there is something that is inbuilt in us, you know. What's the company that speaks of something inbuilt? Come on, youngsters. If you don't uh, interact, then I'm standing here. Something, you know, a company that advertises that there is something inbuilt. Intel? Is it Intel? Intel inside? You know? <laughs> Intelligence inside. That's a short of Intel inside. You know, so there is something that is God has done that inbuilt, you know, and that inbuilt is called conscience. Every human being has something called conscience inside. But the problem with our conscience is whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, whoever you are, if you are not careful to listen to your inner voice, what will happen is over the time that inner voice will fade away. You know, even the the most corrupt person on earth or the biggest robber on earth or a biggest criminal on earth they all had the same conscience like us in the beginning whenever they did something wrong they got hurt this is wrong don't do it what did they do did they turn away no they kept doing wrong again again they had the same feeling they kept doing wrong Again, they had the same feeling, but it was lesser intensity. They kept doing wrong. There comes a time when you don't even know 
that we are away, so much away from God and God's word and God's plan that when we fall, when we do wrong, we don't even realize. That's why it is very, very important that we have God's word in us. That's why it is very important that we are led by the Spirit. And if we are not, what will happen is we may go astray. So from keeping you from going astray, you need to be connected with God. This works, by the way. This angle works. <laughs> okay. You know, I've just put it all together so that things can go fast. We all know that, and you know, it's, it's, a, simple, it's a very common thing. We all know that an empty mind is a devil's workshop. You know, when... You know, you don't have God in his place. If you have not enthroned God in your heart, someone has to take that place, right? And, and you know, you know, there is someone waiting. Oh, my God. He doesn't uh, make an agreement like we make an agreement when we get a house. You know, yesterday when we were going back uh, to a house, there was a brother who called up uh, saying that, you know, uh, Pastor, uh, I would like to get a house, you know. And I was thinking that the brother need the house in coming week or something. But, you know, he's looking for a house in next May. He's coming in next May. And he is planning for that. And, you know, so you need to make an agreement for it. You need to make a booking for it. You need to uh, pay a fees for it. And then you can come in, right? After all the checking and everything. But there is someone, the scripture says in Genesis, if I'm not wrong, it is somewhere in chapter 2, that sin is waiting at your door. Sin is? <laughs> he's not waiting like a man standing there. He's waiting so that he can creep inside. Waiting at the door of your heart. Waiting at the door of your heart so that he can creep inside to take you over. To, win, to take you over. To take the peace of your family. To win over situations. And that's where we not even realize. Somewhere when we lost our family prayer. Somewhere when we lost our Bible meditation, we thought it is okay. It is okay. After a few years, we realize it is not okay. The nation is realizing when they removed prayer from the schools, the nation is regretting it now. When they removed church and, you know, politics, when they separated it, you know, Things are, people are realizing it now when, you know, things have gone wrong. Values have gone wrong. You know, everything is changing. That's when people realize that. And that's where we have to know that, you know, there is someone who is waiting to creep inside. And if you, if you give an opportunity, he will enter. He will enter. He will take that place. It is, a, it is a saying that everyone says, but it has a lot of meaning. When there is something void in you, when there is no God in you, when there is no word of God in you, when there is no prayers in your family, when you are not led by the Spirit, when you don't focus on that, there is someone who is waiting. He will not do an agreement. He will not give you a booking charge. He will not do none of these. He will creep inside you. He will creep inside you and we will not understand how we deteriorate. You know, um, we nowadays we are not using the railway line much, you know, we don't use the train and all. But, you know, you can understand, you can imagine, logically you can imagine the railway tracks. You know, can you imagine this, those two tracks that run together? Can you imagine one going to the left and one going to the right? Come on, that's not possibly not, po it's not possible, right? Because it has to stay together at a certain distance, you know, at a certain width, at a certain, you know, calculation so that, you know, the train can run on those tracks. But you have to know that even if one track deviates one centimeter, that can cause a very big fatal accident. When we drift away from God, when we drift away from the scripture, we don't realize, oh, we say, that's okay. You know, we changed our time of prayer. Oh, that's fine. You know, they are working and that's why, you know, slowly, slowly, we don't understand how it creeps in. But, you know, we don't even know, we will not be able to know that it happened. But by the time we realize, it can be too late. 
That's why, hallelujah, this evening, the, the word of God comes to you that give importance to God's word and say, yes, Lord, I, I want you to restore my life. I want you to restore my soul and I am ready to do that. Lord, help me. We need to fill up our minds with God's word. We have to fill with God's word, read God's word, speak God's word at the house, uh, in your house. You know, you know, let it have, let it be with you. If you are traveling somewhere, let it be with you. There were times when people would not go anywhere without a Bible. Now we don't go anywhere without a. There's nothing wrong. If you have a Bible in this, there is nothing wrong about it. But take time out. Keep the scriptures with you. It is believed that every sin is devised and carried out many times in our minds before it, is really, it really happens. Am I saying the fact? You know, take, take any criminal activity. Any terrorist activity, any, even, even, you know, unless it is, you know, uh, someone died because you are trying to protect someone. It's some, in rare cases, except for very, very rare cases, most of the time, what happens is, you know, the sin, it's not, I'm not, when I'm saying sin, sin is not restricted to only a certain thing. No, anything that you do that is not God's will, already the devil has planted that. That chip is already inside. The chip is already active and it keeps on working in our mind. You know, before it is done, before it actually happens, we have already done that many times. And that's why the scripture says none of us are perfect. You know, we are, no one is perfect, but we need to have a willing heart. And that's something that I want you to make a note of it at the last. A willing heart. A heart to admit, a heart to submit, and a heart to change. If we have that thing, you know, we all go wrong. You know, there is nothing, uh, not, uh, there, you know, it's no surprise that we do, we do go wrong. And there is nothing wrong in doing that. But, the, but something that we have to appreciate in every culture is, you know, in our uh, original Indian culture, you know, many times it is like a shame culture. You know what's a shame culture? Where you know you are not, you're very shameful to admit something. You're very shameful to say that, oh Lord, it happened, forgive me, you know. And we are very, very, we, you know, we are, we are more afraid of our shame than our sin. And here it says, you know, if we, if we are ready to have, we ha if you have a willing heart, a heart to admit before God, a heart where, you know, we are ready to say that, yes, my God, I need that change. I need a restoration. A heart to submit to God and a heart to change. My Lord is saying that this night, this evening, the Lord has already started a work in you. The Lord has started a work in me. Because, you know, when I preach, it has to happen in me so that it can happen in you. And I'm saying, when I was with the scripture, the Lord says, I am doing something new today. Amen. Hallelujah. He is doing something new. Hallelujah. Let us see how it applies. Then the Lord will restore us from within, which will have a greater impact on the outside. My Lord's way is something different. He works from the inside. You know that in, uh, good English song, you know? He works from the inside that brings change in the outside. You know? How that song goes, brother? Uh, that's another one. There is some one song we say, he's working from the inside. You uh, know, that's a song. Okay. Uh, as we get it, uh, we can sing it later on. He's working from the inside, making changes outside. Hallelujah. He's doing that. You know, when someone is uh, changed from the inside, it will be shown or it will be seen in the outside. Amen. It will be. You don't. You cannot hide, you know. You know, you, as it says that your face is the mirror of your heart. The same way when your heart changes, your face will show it. You know, there will be that joy which no one can take it away. Hallelujah. You will have the joy of the Lord in you. King David was a man like us. No difference. He was man like us. Everything same. He didn't have two horns and a tail. No. <laughs> Everything was same. But what was the difference? But he had a heart to repent. He had a heart 
to repent. He was not ashamed to admit when he went wrong. He was not ashamed. You know, of course, it took some time for him to understand that it was his sin that prophet Nathan is speaking about. But the moment he understood that it is him that the Lord is speaking about, he was not ashamed to admit and willing to submit. Willingness to submit before God. Willingness to submit before the word of God. Willingness to do what the Lord says. And it says, and ready to change. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, God doesn't need us to do something that is beyond our capacity. The Lord says that, you know, hard to repent, not ashamed to be, to admit, willing to submit and ready to change. And you still speak about King David. <laughs> we still preach about him. We still speak about him, not because he had no sin in his life, but because he was ready to change. Amen. He was ready to change. Bible may show people who has been victorious and not victorious. But if someone is on the list of victorious, it was not because they didn't have failures. They did have failures, but they were not sitting there. They got up from that place. They repented. You know, they admitted. They submitted their lives. And they were ready for a change. And that's the reason we see God calling David a man after my own heart. Amen. A man after my own heart. Not many people has been given that uh, prestigious, uh, you know, uh, statement. You know, a man after my own heart. You know. Uh, uh, let us run ahead. This is one of the areas. As we go forward, let's go through Psalms 51, verse 10 to 13. What it says that, you know, as we have less time, I'm going to run fast. We need to cover up some areas. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. It's a beautiful song, right? And restore me the joy of my salvation. Again, it's King David. Again, he says there, restore me the joy of my salvation. You know, this is something so special. And uphold me by your generous spirit, then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. They're saying that restore me the joy of my salvation. David prays for that. And you know, it is only those people who have experienced the joy of uh, salvation would know what it is. You know, having the joy of salvation is something beautiful. Just go back for to your memory for a minute. Just think of you know the time that you were saved, the time that you came to know the Lord, that the time when the Lord lifted you out of the miry clay, the time that God brought you out of your situations. You know, it is something that is so profound that we don't want to forget it. No one. I cannot forget. You know, I'm born and brought up in a, in a, in a Pentecostal family. In the, I'm a third generation of uh, uh, ser serving the Lord. You know, everything is fine. But unless God doesn't deal with you. Unless God doesn't deal with each of us, we will not have, I cannot take my grandfather's joy or my father's joy and say that it is my joy. No, I have the tradition from them. I, am, I have the privilege from them. But my relationship with my God is personal, is intimate. If someone here has still not come to a personal relationship with God, this is the time when you have to reflect on yourself. We will have some time. I will ask for a few more minutes from the pastor so that, you know, we will have some time because the Lord wants to work in these areas. These are the areas where the Lord is going to touch us. Hallelujah. Only those who have experienced it knows the value of it. And what is required for that? What is required for you to have the joy of salvation? What is the main thing that is required there? What did, what did David understand that he was missing? It was that he was not in the right relationship with God. If you are in right relationship with God, nothing can take that away. Amen? Hallelujah. And that is the key 
to sustaining the joy of salvation. And you know, there is nothing more because the scripture says it is better to be in your courts. Psalms 84 says it is better to be in your courts than to be anywhere else. Because there is more joy, there is, there is happiness, there is dancing in your presence. Hallelujah. Right relationship with God and man is key to it. It's not just relationship with God, but it is also with man. If there are areas where we need to sort it out, we need to sort it out. If we have some problem with someone, if it is with our brothers, sisters, if it is with someone else, we need to get it right. Because if you want to get back the joy of salvation, you cannot get it back if you are not having the right relationship. For that I will always say, you know, I don't want to come forward because I'll go out of the light. You know, right here you have a sign of a cross. You know, the cross signifies your relationship with God and your relationship with man. It is not complete. You know, the horizontal, sorry, the vertical, if it is your relationship with God, the horizontal stands for the, your relationship with man. A cross is not complete. One, one is bigger than the other because that is more important, but both of them are important. So it is very important that we have the right relationship. What, what can take it away is nothing else but sin. Anything that is displeasing to God is sin. Anything that is not according to the word is sin. Sin cannot be described as lighter skin and heavier skin. No, sin. <laughs> Nowadays people, you know, we, uh, people contextualize it in a different manner, you know. Uh, small sin. Uh, medium sin, bigger sin. No, there is nothing like that. Sin is sin. Something that you do wrong. Something that is not scriptural. Something that is not according to God's word. Something that is not holy is sin. And sin can't take that away. I know there has been times in my life when I have gone down. When I have felt that I am all alone. You know, where I have felt that, you know, uh, no one loves me. No one cares for me. I have been, you know, I felt dejected in my life. And that's where, you know, the, you know a, few, a while ago we spoke about someone who creeps in, you know. He creeps into your heart. He creeps into your mind. And he takes control of you. And he says that you are good for nothing. But in reality, who is good for nothing? <laughs> it's a devil that is good for nothing. Why? Because, you know, the, the Jesus had victory over the devil and he is already beaten. He is already defeated. But he will come into our hearts and sing, you are good for nothing. But here we have to understand it's sin that snatches away. And that's what, you know, the, the beginning part of this verse, it's like a beautiful song that we have to sing every day, you know. Going back to that one, it says, you know, we, it's, it's something nice that we can sing in the morning, sing in the evening, create in me a clean heart of God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. This is something that if that comes from within our heart, you know, that will bring a change, that will bring a restoration within us. You know, and do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me and restore me the joy of my salvation. Because salvation is the greatest gift that mankind has ever received. It is the greatest gift that we have ever received. It is something that we have not paid the price. And sometimes I feel, is it that's the reason that we take this for granted? Is it so? Because, you know, that's, is that the reason that we take salvation for granted? Because someone else paid the price? The reason is we could have never paid the price. We could have never paid the price for ourselves. And that's where Jesus paid the price. And we, ha we have received that salvation. You know, uh, oh, it's just come as a repeat. Salvation shouldn't stop within oneself, but it should uh, but take it to others. We have to take uh, the experience of salvation. If we have the joy of salvation, it should be our greatest desire to see that this joy of salvation is taken to my family. is taken to my friends. is taken to my colleagues. And that's where we will be able to say, yes, you know, this is where the Lord has restored my joy and the Lord is doing something great in others. 
because you know when the when the salvation happens you know when the joy of salvation comes in it is like a wholesome thing it brings peace to our heart it brings healing to our body because it's a wholesome thing it brings deliverance to our body mind and spirit hallelujah praise god but many times we just focus on certain things like when people i have seen communities those who focus more on the outside they neglect the inside or those who focus more on the inside they neglect the outside but here the scripture says very specifically it begins from inside and it will reflect the outside hallelujah our joy it will begin from the inside and it has to reflect the outside as david says in the end of that verse every sinner shall be converted when you will get restored your joy of salvation what will happen is through you God is also not just bringing joy into your heart God is using you God will use you as a minister God will use you as an ambassador of that joy and it says that sinners shall be converted for it becomes the mission statement Hallelujah Hallelujah it's not that king david is you know he he understood his joy and he got it back he was happy no you know he would declare the whole nation to fasting he will declare that joy to the whole nation he will say my our lord is god he is wonderful you know he will not he will not hold it to himself have you seen any kings who have experienced the love of god the joy of god holding it back to themselves no especially not david King David have he have always expressed himself and he's expressing there because he says that every sinner shall be converted what the reason is because when the joy comes in your heart the true joy comes in your heart you are not going to stop it's like the overflowing river you cannot hold it back you cannot stop it back you know nowadays we have dams for it right we make dams and we try to stop some waters but how much how how long can we stop it you know a few months back something happened in kerala we all saw that you know no dams could be stopped there no they could not hold those waters through any of those dams you know whatever they held back they had to give it up the reason was it was like when there is an overflowing you know overflowing of joy you know what will happen is that salvation will be experienced not just by few but by everyone around you amen amen if not for our forefathers if not for if not for them experiencing the love of god would we be standing here would we be sitting here see they didn't keep their joy to themselves you know they took that joy to places unknown hallelujah hallelujah you know when when uh, uh, i was ministering in bombay and then when we got an opportunity to be back in dubai you know from 2007 to 2011 i didn't get any opportunity to go back to missions you know and somewhere i was getting restless you know because i was i'm a bombay kid born and brought up there uh, you know coming here it was a different community you know so i was just feeling restless and i started praying from 2009 onwards at home we used to sit and pray lord open a way for the missions open a way for the missions and in 2011 you know that was a time when I, we could be together and we could associate and also we started a missions together with few people like minded people and you know something that we initially thought would not be an easy thing because we were in the gulf in the middle east and going to india looking taking care of it would not be easy but when you trust in god everything is possible today we have more than 45 missionaries in central and north india and you know serving god and you know taking the gospel ahead and whenever possible especially when we were back in uh, uh, middle east every year after 2011 i would go and spend time there and it was such a joy a joy that was so different i'm just taking something from them i just overheard my uncle and auntie saying that when they were in bhopal that was the best time of their life 
I'm just taking it. <laughs> I have not taken. I've just overheard them talking. You know, the joy. They were speaking of joy, nothing else. It was not about, they were not saying that that was the wealthiest time of their life. They were not telling that that was the most peaceful. No, they said that was the most joyous time of their life where they could experience the love of God. They could know, you know, they could feel it in their life. And it's same applied to us. Unless you don't step out, unless you don't take a decision, you would not even understand how much God can do with us. But when we step out, he is able to go beyond our imagination. I'm concluding here for tonight. Beyond our imagination. Beyond our imagination. This night I want to spend some time with your permission, a few minutes, so that law, we can focus on what we heard. Focus on the God's scriptures. And here, you know, to submit ourselves because the Lord wants to bring that restoration. He has begun the work in you. He has begun that good work in you. And God wants to continue that good work in us. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi, Shekhala Ragadani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to continue that good work in you. Hallelujah. Each one of us. Each one of us, there is not even a small child who doesn't need a restoration in life. Each one of us, we need restoration. I would request each one of you to come forward. Do not be in your place.